So the keys to studying in medical school are repetition, layering, and active learning. So in my opinion, the keys to effective and efficient learning in medical school are repetition, layering, and active learning. And I'll be going over a general overview of how I use these and then I'll be going through more specifics of the actual techniques and resources that I use for each of these strategies. I'll include links down below in the description box of all the resources that I mentioned as well as other resources that I use or other people in my class use that you can use as alternative resources if you prefer, if you want to use the same method or some kind of variation of this method with uh, other resources. And I'll include a link also to a video that I mentioned that covers pretty much all the medical school resources that are popular with medical students nowadays. There's a Latin proverb that kind of translates to repetition is the mother of learning. And I feel that repetition is highly important in learning anything, especially for medical school, since there is so much information and having multiple passes through information generally helps you understand information better, remember information better, and do better on your exams. While I do recommend repetition, I don't recommend just going through the same material over and over again. I recommend layering, so this involves having multiple passes with more and more detail. So first you start off with the general concepts with your first pass, and with the next passes you try to dial down into more of the details. This allows you to establish kind of a conceptual framework of what you're studying, and it also allows you to get more passes through the material. So one problem that I had is that I tended to focus on all the small details right away, and what that could do is it often left me lost in the small details, and I'm trying to remember discrete details, and it led me to have issues kind of remembering larger concepts and how the small details tied into the larger conceptual framework. So try to focus on the concepts first, and then move on to the details so you can get more passes through the material, and you have a good foundational knowledge of that concept and you can add in those extra details later on. So research shows that things like paraphrasing, highlighting, rereading, and even summarizing, especially if you don't do it effectively as most people don't, isn't the most efficient and effective form of learning. So what you want to do is after you get through reading and watching videos initially and having those first few passes of material and you start getting an understanding of the subject, you want to try to move to active learning as soon as possible. So research has shown that using spaced repetition and questions are more effective at enhancing your learning and helping you retain the information. So spaced repetition would be taking advantage of the forgetting curve where you forget information kind of at some form of a decay curve. And what you'd be doing is trying to remember information right before you forget it. So you're kind of, you're straining your brain a little bit to remember facts and that actually helps you retain information for longer. It's kind of like a muscle where when you strain more when you're working out, you tend to get stronger as a result. So to implement this effectively, I recommend using flashcards for spaced repetition. Anki and Firecracker are both great services that take care of the spaced repetition for you so you don't have to worry about when you're starting to forget information. They'll test you and help you out with that automatically. For question banks, there's plenty of question banks that I mentioned in my resource video that I linked down below again, and uh, you guys can check those out. So for the way I implemented these techniques into my study schedule, this is kind of like the method that I, de I developed towards the end of my second year of medical school. I didn't use this for all the organ systems blocks that I went through since I was still experimenting and also I was often behind on a lot of my classes with studying unfortunately and so sometimes I'd only do a few passes of material but I'd recommend doing as many passes as you can in the block you're in. So my first or second pass if I was going to lecture which I stopped doing after a while I would be selective with whatever lectures and whatever lectures I wanted to watch and instead of going in person I found it more effective to just study at home and I'd watch the videos on 1.5 or 2 times speed if I were to look at lectures Cheers which again I use increasingly less of as first years went by. This allows you to pause videos, look up information when you don't know information or you find something interesting and you can replay things and it's very convenient I feel and you get through material even faster. So if I weren't going to do lectures or look at lectures this would be my first or second pass and if I were to go to lectures by my second or third pass and I for those I'd use Boards and Beyond and Pathoma. Those pretty much became my first two passes of the material First, I'd go through it slowly, and second, I would go through at 1.5 or 2 times speed to get a quick review of the material after I went through it once, especially if I didn't go to lecture or read the lecture material. For the first two passes of material, I'd recommend trying not to get one caught up in notes if you tend to write down every single fact down. Maybe you can write down things like important clinical correlates, interesting facts that you learned, questions that you have, and other high-yield pearls. I'd also recommend trying to always look up things that you aren't sure about, so don't just try to infer them, but maybe ask a friend or look it up online since lapses in your overall conceptual framework 
can come back to bite you later on. For my second pass of the material, if it was memorization heavy, something like biochemistry, I would write out pathways over and over again and that tended to be uh, helpful for me. In general, I'd recommend doing a strategy that I kind of used towards the end of my second year of medical school. I wish I used it a lot more since I find I still remember concepts that I studied through this technique even nowadays. And this technique is learning in a way where you're learning to teach. And so basically what you can do is learn a concept and then try to either outline it really quickly or just present it to an imaginary friend or maybe a real friend or an imaginary classroom. And what you're going to try to do is go through, for example, if it's if you're studying ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease, you'll go through and teach the etiology of those diseases, the pathophysiology, the signs and symptoms, the clinical manifestations and important buzzwords, histology, the management and treatment options, and how these two differ from each other. And if you're able to teach it or any other concept effectively, that usually means you have a good grasp of the material. And if there's certain concepts that you don't know well and you find out through that teaching process, then those are areas that you need to work on. And I found this very effective and very helpful in remembering information later on. So for my third pass of the material, which I would sometimes do, or maybe I'd push this off till uh, right before an exam, this would be looking through first aid. So it'd be reading the organ system section for first aid. For example, if it was neurology, I just read through the neurology section. They're usually about 20 to 50 pages and uh, they cover all the high yield information, but they're more outline form. So they, it wouldn't be good for a first pass of the material, but it's a nice refresher of all the material that you need to know and all the high yield points in whatever system you're studying. So for my third or fourth pass, I would use start using more active forms of learning like flashcards. Again, I'd use Anki and I'd use the Bros deck, sometimes the Zanki deck from the R Medical School subreddit. I would also use the Tracy McGrady deck for pharmacology and I think I tried a little bit of Pepper as well as some other decks. I'll link again all the resources I mentioned down below and you guys can experiment with whatever you like better. Along with this, I'd use Sketchy Micro. Some people, some of my classmates like Sketchy Pathology and Pharmacology. I didn't like it as much as Sketchy Micro, but I definitely feel at least some or maybe even all of the Sketchy videos would be helpful to you in learning either my micro pharmacology or pathology or maybe all three of those so definitely try those out and since they're mnemonic devices I think they kind of stick in your brain better and uh, they're a great way to remember bits of information that you might otherwise not so for my fourth and or fifth pass of information I would start using question banks I wish I started doing question banks to, towards my first year of medical school since they're very effective and I feel like I would have retained a lot of the information a lot better if I had used question banks earlier however I started using them more towards my second year and the end of my second year of medical school I use the Kaplan question banks I'd select questions by organ system and I just try to do as many of those as I could. If you have time I'd recommend going through as many question banks as you can. So Kaplan, USMLE, RX, Pass Test and any others that you can find. The more question banks that you do the better you'll be not just at doing questions but it'll also help you remember information better and uh, you'll be better off in the long run. Again I'll link uh, lots of question banks down below in the description or I will include a link to my resource video that you can check out that has links to uh, several question banks. Along with this I would also do first aid cases usually closer to my exam like my midterm or my final and those are also like question banks but they tend to be about like 20 or so questions and they have these little clinical vignettes and they have breakdowns of different considerations for each of those cases and important information from first aid that covers each of those considerations. So for my sixth or seventh pass of the material which would ideally happen if, especially if I didn't do my third pass of first aid I'd try to go over first aid again all through it once a little bit more passively unfortunately but I still felt it was helpful and so I try to do a quick pass of first aid before an exam so maybe like the day before or unfortunately the morning of if I was cramming I try to go through all of first aid if I was really on top of it it may be a day or two before I'd start so I could make sure I had at least an outline in my mind of important concepts and high yield facts that I needed to remember for the exam so that was a quick overview of how I like to study in medical school and the different techniques that I use to study a little bit more efficiently and effectively I kind of developed these throughout the first years of medical school looking at how different people studied kind of experimenting with different stra strategies that I found either online or I just tried to come up with on my own and I found this to be the most effective method for me so far. I hope some of it or maybe all of it even is helpful to you guys. So make sure to give this video a like, subscribe if you haven't, comment down below if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions. Let me know if you found any of these tips helpful or you have any helpful study strategies that maybe I haven't mentioned in this video and we could help the other pre-meds or medical students out. So thank you guys again for watching and good luck studying. Take care. Why am I so weird?